Hello, everybody. This is Narada Rishi Raja with Sacred Vibes Holistic Center. And I want to start this new series because it's it's been on my heart to clarify a lot of things, just explore with everyone, right? And this series is called Decoding the Structure of God. Now, don't get triggered by the G word. Um, we're going to look into that more, right? We're going to look into what that is. Source, right? But when we say God, everybody across every nation pretty much knows what we mean. Uh, so God's source, um, you know, and that, that also includes goddess, you know, all of those things, uh, because this is much, much bigger, right? It's much bigger than what we can conceptualize in a standard dualistic mindset. Humans, we have the physical reality that we experience with our senses. As you tune in, you'll find out you can experience more. There are certain individuals that are highly sensitive, They're more deeply tuned in, if you will. And it can be to many different senses. It can be to hearing, it can be to feeling, it can be to seeing, it can be to all kinds of things. Mental processing. Um, and these things aren't explained by modern day science, um, for the most part, except once you get into deep particle physics, quantum physics, etc., a lot of this stuff becomes totally possible. They just don't know how, right? So that's what I mean. It can't be explained. It shows that it's possible, but we don't have the intelligence yet to figure out, you know, exactly how, for the most part, as far as science goes. Now, when we look at this, we take this further, and we're trying to decode the structure of God, right? And you could also call this journey another thing. You could call it a journey to self-realization. That's what we call it in the yogic path. Anybody who knows, you'll know that, you know, that that's the particular science that I use for spirituality. Um, so you could call it self-realization. You could call it finding yourself. Finding your authentic self. Right? Authentic means that part that won't go anywhere. If it's God's source, if it's source, things had to originate from it, and it has to always be. So it has to be infinite. So really, we're just trying to explore and understand the infinite, right? So it's a process of evolution. That's why everybody's so driven to do it. Now we see why it's so important biologically to explore this concept, discovering, you know, that, that wonderful structure that is God. So let's get into our first lesson today. Lesson, talk, discussion, whatever we want to call it. And what we're going to talk about today is what I can piece together, and mind you, this is all the ramblings of a random prophet over here. Take it as you will, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. But if it resonates deeply, excellent. Give me a like, share, subscribe, that way more people can understand, more people can open up their minds at least. But what I can understand is one of the major issues that we have today is religious trauma. And a lot of that came from Abrahamic faith. It's true. Islam, Judaism, Christianity. The Reverend at Unity of Bay City, where I attend, um, and I heard it many years before by Ram Das, the same exact statement, and I love it. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. These are techniques. Each religion is a technique. Now, what I'm going to talk about today, I've never heard anybody else talk about directly. But this is why we have a lot of the religious trauma, where I think it comes from, deeply rooted. Now, yes, 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 we can say all kinds of things about, well, I have it because this situation happened in my life where it was pressed on me. Or we could say that it happened because governments used the church to control people for years and years and years. We could jump on any other trigger we really wanted to, right? But 
essentially, when you truly understand all of those faiths, well, they paint a different story. And then if you see how those faiths were distributed, it paints another story. So let's look deeply. They were started by Abraham, a prophet, Muhammad, a prophet, Yeshua, Jesus, or as they call him in, e in India, Isa, a prophet. If we look at the Bible alone, so let's, let's, let's tackle Christianity because that's what a lot of people in the West here um, have religious trauma with, right? Well, these Abrahamic religions, they're prophet religions. Prophet religions. Now, what do I mean by that? It's not a religion that's spread by prophets. No, that's part of the problem. <laughs> Their faiths that are based around a prophet, which was speaking direct God sources word because they made themselves a clear channel, 100% clear channel. Therefore, they their mouth was the same as God's. That is a prophet. A prophet has the same word as God. A prophet has a lot of sacrifice in their life and a lot of accountability. Um, if they don't walk this narrow, narrow path, then that extra sensitivity can destroy them. Because as you're extra sensitive and you can clear out that channel to be a full mouthpiece for the God source intention, and this is 100% true, folks, what happens? Well, there's the other side, which is the material side. In the Christian faith or Abrahamic faith, you could say the devil, right? Um, but that's the material side. Similar to the fight that we have in our body when we're trying to balance our nervous system. We're fighting against the amygdala, the amygdala hijack, the ego mind, which has got control over all of our memory centers in the material. So it can use that temptation, <laughs> knows all of our temptation, it can use that against us, right? Interesting story I'm painting now. Because all of these books that you would read, they can explain to you this scaffolding structure that is God. Every single one of them. But you can't take them literal. Yet, you have to believe them 100%. If you can do that, guess what? You're a prophet then you don't need the text. Yet you'll still read them, that way you can try and help others because that's all you do. <laughs> and the problem is, is this prophet faith though. This is for those that are highly sensitive. This is for those that have chosen to go to the spiritual heights. They want heaven on earth. They want to go to heaven, not a really cool place, right? So that takes commitment, that takes discipline, because it's a perception. It's not a place you go to. It's a place you create in here, right? That's why prophets can be so stern in themselves. They can be so stable, because they're in heaven. How everybody else responds to them, it doesn't matter anymore. They're in heaven. And if everybody else wants to get there, they can too. But they got to do the same thing, right? This is, this is the book. But when you take that, which is made for this specific group of individuals that are at a specific evolution of consciousness, you take that and then you give it to everybody, the masses. You force it on the masses. Everybody's not ready for that. Everybody's not capable of that right now, where they're at. So if they hold themselves to that standard, what happens? They get shame. They get killed. Which brings the challenge of the religious trauma, right? 
for one reason or another, however it played out in your life. It doesn't change the message of the prophets. It doesn't change that their words were from God, even if we can't understand it, right? You're trying to understand the infinite, which means when you read it, it shouldn't make sense directly, because if you don't already understand the infinite, then it shouldn't make sense directly. You're trying to, right? And words always limit something, so it's really, really hard. Words are hard, short answer, right? That sums up all of it, actually. No, um, but when we, when we go and look at it as this was for a specific group of people doing a specific job, and everybody is equal, doesn't mean this job is better than another one, higher than another one. No, it just means they are vibrationally aligned with that experience. They've evolved their consciousness to that level. And you'll know. Because in order to read any of the Abrahamic faiths properly, you have to have transcended fear. They're total bhakti faiths, which is beyond devotion. To do it properly. To do it without spiritual ego. Means you have no fear. Right? Most that are following those faiths, you, they would say, I'm working on that. I'm working on that. And that's excellent. And that's great. And if they have no shame in what they're doing, then that's perfect. But you also have to have tips, tricks, and techniques, right? That's why it has to be taught through a prophet. Not a priest. Not a preacher. Not a reverend. Not a minister. Not necessarily like that. Although, they serve their purpose because they bring the word alive. They keep the word alive. So that that way, way, when a prophet does come, they can reach it. They can then be inspired again. God doesn't die because the word continues. This is how we get God is the word. As well as sound is what has made up all of us. <laughs> so, we have a lot of religious trauma because a faith that was meant for a specific group of people was intentionally distributed to the masses, thus discrediting that faith because the masses would have shame, guilt, and fear, and they'd throw the baby out with the bathwater. And then they'd be wondering, why don't I have faith? Well, you threw it out. Now, that's not to say that the Abrahamic faiths are the only faith. Like I said, I follow the yogic more than Hindu tradition, which you'll find is all the same. I follow the perennial philosophy, if I were to say the truth. Um, but the yogic stories, they, they relate to me. But also, you know, I read the Bible as well. I read the Quran. I read, I read the, many, many different texts. Many, many, so many. But that's the thing. When we go through all of these, what we see is we see these patterns. Right? Every spiritual text is exactly the same. Every prophecy is exactly the same. It's saying the same thing when you understand it. Every prophecy, we have a story of horrible utterness in, in, in just every single way you can imagine, described in different ways. But again, it's a story to explain a feeling, an essence right? So we have it where it's so bad, and then you have hope, and then you have salvation. Every single one of these stories, guess what? Look at it as a story that's teaching you about the battle that's going on in here. We are a microcosm of the macrocosm. And then on top of that, look at that story and analyze all of those to the point where you start looking at everything as a story. This is the reason why tarot is actually Abrahamic. <laughs> J 
Joke's on everybody who thought it was the devil that was a Christian, Jew, or Muslim. Tarot is Abrahamic. Um, the reason I say this is because all of the symbolism deals with that. Um, and tarot is how the Old Testament stories were able to be continued. Now let's go further with this, because we're talking about prophets today, right? Which is probably going to be a theme that comes up often, because a lot of them are being activated. But we look at this, and the very first card, and this is interesting, this is my north node. Um, so this is what I'm supposed to learn in this life and fully become. We get the emperor. So this is an archetype. This is an energy, right? When you learn how to read all of these energies, they're just divine essences of God, aspects of God. When you learn how to read all of these better and better and better, then you're able to look at your life and you don't get lost in the story, right? As long as you do practices, daily practices, breath work, meditation, yoga, in order to keep your system clear. And if you're a highly sensitive or you resonate with the term of prophet or anything like that, if you resonate with the term of psychic, keep going, keep going, practice. <sighs> Cause you're gonna, you're gonna build up so much stuff. It's gonna be so much anxiety, depression, etc. Because when you start to awaken to that call of your sensitivity, the call of the prophet, when you start to awaken to that call, what happens is you start to feel as if uh, everything is, is too much because it is by yourself. It's telling you, you have to clear out and plug in because it doesn't want any ego in the message, any, which is why it's a sacrifice, right? But we learn how to read these energies, these archetypes, and then we look at every story in our life so we don't get lost in the drama, right? We don't get lost in the sauce. We're able to remain unattached and balanced. Why yoga teaches the form of non-attachment. I hope that this, this uh, episode, I guess, of this series really speaks to you and clarifies some of that religious trauma. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's, it's a faith for prophets that have to be understood by those that read spiritual poetry like, like it's, it's the ABCs. And they're ones that already understand like what they have to do is a very narrow path. So it's a reminder to keep them on that very narrow path. What you choose to do, you're your own expression of God, right? But that's what that's for. And I hope that that helps bridge a lot of that religious trauma. And sin, it was, it was taught and interpreted very, very wrong. So everything you think you know about it, pretend you don't. Because even sin is just an archery term, which means to miss the mark. So it just means a misunderstanding. All right, everybody. I hope that this clarifies a lot of that hurt and helps bridge that gap. Thank you all so much. Have a great day on purpose and stay mindful. Namaskar.